sun is setting. I just finished fishing. I forgot to film an intro. But yeah, just out here doing some uh, middle of the day fishing today. On the full moon, I find that middle of the day to actually be like the best time to fish. And it's super fun because you don't really get too many opportunities to do the, the midday fishing where they're active. So just to give you some context of this video, this is right at the beginning of the fall run. This is sort of like the first push of fish. Um, I didn't put this video out because I had other videos that I felt like were a little more interesting, but um, yeah, I'm kind of going through my footage. I have this video, maybe one more, but as far as fishing for striped bass for the fall run, I'm done. Um, I just kind of, you know, I'm a little tired. I want to focus on other things, but in this video, it's uh, there's no dead cast. It's just catch, catch after catch, so I'm just going to kind of go through it and when I was going through the footage I wasn't speaking at all there's just other people fishing and I don't want to get in their way um, my kind of like mentality when it comes to fishing next to a bunch of other people is I don't know whether it's like the one day of the week that they get to fish the one day of the month that they get to fish but I just try and give people space and uh, only really talk when um, people ask me questions or 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 want to talk but I usually give people as much space as possible and so yeah I'm just going to do some narration over this maybe talk about some things I learned about striped bass this year um, which really wasn't as much as I, I hoped I kind of gave up on the striper a little bit earlier this season um, probably about the end of June started in July I kind of started focusing on weak fish because the weak fish population um, was a little bit better than in previous years and so I just kind of started to pattern them out left the striper alone and then kind of picked it back up in the fall um, but I didn't really you know every year I feel like I learned something new about the striper and this year I feel like I kind of slacked a little bit um, caught a couple nice fish um, but really uh, as, as far as like understanding behavior of striper I, I really kind of uh, didn't didn't learn as much as I wish I hoped, but um, yeah, maybe maybe in the comment section, uh, re comment something that you learned about striper. I, I always love uh, hearing something. Maybe I could learn something from from the comment section. I seem to learn a lot from it. Um, but yeah, just uh, stripers just started to move in at when this video was filmed. And it was a pretty quick little run this year. I feel like it didn't extend too further out um, than the first week of, of December. So it is what it is. I can I I feel like striped bass can predict the weather, honestly. Like in most like even largemouth bass too. I feel like they can predict weather because uh, anytime like the first like major cold front comes in i can tell that the fish are already on the move uh season after season and um yeah they're just uh i feel like their fish are maybe two weeks ahead of human beings when it comes to like under understanding and predicting upcoming weather conditions and changes that might affect um their feeding patterns so um i definitely maybe that's one thing that i um, I'm starting to confirm year after year is that striper in particular can definitely predict weather changes that might affect how they um, feed and utilize a, a certain body of water and makes or breaks the decision of whether or not they need to migrate to find that ideal temperature, temperature range um, to not have to exert as much energy. So... Yeah, I guess that's one thing that I kind of um, confirmed a little bit more this year. And as far as like uh, lures, um, the same same group of lures this year, you know, bucktails. I love the Spro bucktail. Um, that's kind of my default is this, the S, you know, sports professionals, the Spro bucktail. I really like the way that's that's tied up, and I like the way the jig head is. Um, Paddle tails, top water, spook, and that's pretty much it. The usual suspects. I really didn't change up too much as far as presentations go. Um, I started working on my own lure, uh, like a little bunker profile, towards like mid to end of summer, and I'm almost done with the version four of that. So I guess that's one thing that 
that kind of changed this year, and that's an exciting, exciting thing to, to look for and keep tweaking. Yeah, it's pretty much it. Um, definitely write something that, that you learned this year. I'm always, always curious. So I was just looking at the adjustments for harvesting striped bass in 2024 and uh, possible changes to the regulations. And my opinion is I don't really have much of an opinion. I don't, I don't keep striped bass. I just sport fish for them. But I do wish that there was some discussion about the trophy striped bass. You know, if you hit the world record or if you break the world record, like what to do with some kind of like protocol that, the, that could be set up. The tagging system a trophy tag that you could purchase or just some kind of discussion around it because right now i mean you really can't prove um you know with the current regulations you can't prove the world record to striped bass i mean i guess you could with photo documentation or something but or if you were to uh you know beach your boat and go on land and uh wave the striper with your boat on landing at photographs and photographs and stuff but I don't know, I feel like you're going to be harming the fish. Um, a fish that large, you know, it's going to exert so much energy in the fight. Um, that just the documentation process, I think, could kind of harm it before you release it, just with the current regulations. So I do wish there was more discussion about that, um, just for people that are, are really active and uh, on the, the lifelong hunt, you know, for that world record break. Um but yeah, that, that's one thing that's been on my mind lately, or, or at least more in 2023 that was on my mind a lot, is like what the protocol would be if you actually do break the world record. If anyone else has another option about the trophy system, about how to weigh in a world record striped bass, I would love to know because I was even just thinking about it, the boga grip. The biggest boga grip maxes out at 60 pounds, so you'd have to have, you know, a, like a proper tear... Uh, scale and like a proper level surface to bring the fish onto to actually get like a the right documentation for the weight of the fish you know measuring um the girth of the fish and the length to get the measurement is not like an exact number so i don't know i, I really feel like there's no way around it about uh you know bringing in the world re world record striped bass with you know having to kill it in the process so i don't know that's been on my mind a lot this year. The old zoom fluke. Gotta love the zoom fluke. Such a versatile lure. I would put it in the top three. It's definitely like the top five of lures I use this year and use year after year after year. But it just works and it's affordable and I'm definitely very pro Zoom Fluke. And since we're on the topic of rambling for this video, what's your opinion on felt versus carbide spikes for shoes? I'm curious. I like the carbide spikes, but I've never used felt for, for rock type jetty situations like I'm doing in this video. Um, so, I'd be curious. And I'm just letting line out just to make sure I'm feeling bottom contact. For this type of fishing, you kind of have to adjust your, your weight of your jig depending upon the, the current speed of that given day and the, the moon phase. Um, so you kind of have to play it by ear, but that's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of... Basically not doing anything at all. I'm trying to wait till I feel bottom contact and, and then start to to start my retrieve. I kind of let these clips play and it was a little bit boring, but I guess I dropped that fish there. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm just going to narrate over the rest of this footage. I kind of feel like this is a podcast right now. I don't have much, much interesting things to say. We've got this nice airplane flying by in the background of this footage some boats some cargo ships going to and from new york city the big apple the city that never sleeps and we're reeling in this striped bass on a nice mostly clear sky sunny day beginning of the fall run yeah it's tough working these bass against the current like that um, you know they're large large fish to begin with but once they're working against the current like that um, they definitely feel twice as heavy 
So you're gonna kind of tighten down your drag. It's a bit of a balance with the drag, though. You don't want it too tight because if you if you tighten your drag down all the way, then you're gonna put a big hole in the fish, and then you slack the line, and all of a sudden you pop the fish off. So unless you're really confident with we're putting tons of pressure on the fish, then you want to do lockdown drag. But I usually back off the drag a little bit. You can see him. The fish was able to take a nice little run there. And just because when the, the current's sweeping back and forth against the jays, there's a lot of pressure against the fish. So you put that big hole in the fish and all of a sudden, you know, the fish is going to get off. It's going to turn its head. It's going to... Gonna get, it's gonna get free because you got a big hole in the mouth because you put too much pressure on it. So yeah, I kind of um, I back off my drag a little bit more than most people. I usually don't have too many problems with other anglers. Um, I can usually get the fish in just fine. Uh, you can see I've got enough drag, tight enough drag to pull that fish up onto the rock. So I don't know. Sometimes I feel like my drag is too loose, and then other times I feel like it's perfect, and I should probably stop second-guessing it and leave it a little bit more on the loose side. Because you can see even that little hole that I put in the fish there, you yeah, know, that's, that's big enough that the the barb would, would come loose on that. So basically fishing barbless. But yeah, a lot of people around, I don't really do too much talking. It's also a tough to film in these situations because I don't really want to show people's faces. Uh, if you got sunglasses on, that's fine. Um, or if I know you um, and I know that, that you won't care being on camera, but yeah, I'm usually pretty careful with that. Or I'll zoom in or edit the footage around people's faces. But these fish were uh, pretty tight to the bottom. Not really surfaced at all. Just kind of sitting in the current. And I'm barely doing anything. I'm pretty much just letting the jig move in the current. I think at this point I had up up to four ounce bucktail. I think that was the biggest I had that day was four ounces. And yeah. It's also kind of nice doing this voiceover because this is the, my reel. I was making a lot of noise. I remember on these, these trips that I was making at that time and I finally got it fixed. But... Just took a bunch of grease and, uh, grease and all, uh, some tweaking, and I got, got it to not make noise anymore, but that's kind of a common theme with the pen, with the pen reels, I've noticed. I love these clear sky days. I think it's my favorite way to, to fish for striped bass, especially if they're blitzing, like, if they're blitzing midday, super fun. And from shore. I can't figure out whether I like the shore or the kayak better. I'm starting to lean towards shore fishing. I wish I had a, a car so I could get around in different spots and kind of bounce around more. But uh, the bicycle works pretty well for me in New York City. I, I definitely get around. Nice little, I don't know, 26 inch straight pass. Something like that. And yeah. I don't know why the bucktail works so well in heavy current. I, th I think just because it mimics such a wide variety of profiles of bait. A lot of boats out there this day. I forgot about that. There's a lot of boats. A lot of people trolling. I guess the birds start to stack up. I can see them now starting to stack up. But I remember this day there was a lot of people trolling. I think someone had a like a mojo rig moving around. That's okay. Yeah, just back-to-back -back fish. Um, when you know where they're stacked up and they're that mid mid size, you know, right around slot, slightly under slot, slightly over slot. The slot's not very big, so you know what I'm saying. When they're in that school range, they're stacked up, and you know where they're staged at. You know, you can hit them cast after cast. Definitely tide's starting to come in at this point. Get starting to get wet. But yeah. 
Bucktail just tried and true lure. Tell you what, Bucktail just always works. Yeah, really versatile. I like I like it for freshwater too. I like the buck Bucktail for freshwater. I think it works great in freshwater. I started doing the voiceover for this for this this morning and uh, started like breaking it up. I kind of like this just sort of talking. I'm gonna light a light a candle. I got this lavender candle. I'm gonna light that up and we'll keep keep looking at this footage. So I got the lens kind of wet. I guess at this point, tough to clean the lens when you got a fish on. Light this lavender candle. It's got three wicks. The lavender candle. All right. Yeah, pretty good striped bass season. Started early, ended ended a little earlier. I don't know. Pretty much all right on time, to be honest with you. Maybe two weeks earlier than last season. Wiping off the camera there. Sorry, I had some acid acid indigestion there. Okay, here comes a another striped bass. It's, it's a, kind of important to have a nice long leader in these situations. I get lazy sometimes, and because uh, I tie direct, this is a, this was a nice fish. I remember this this was a nice one. That's slot size right there. It's definitely like a uh, you know 29 something like that inch fish. That's a nice one right there. Nice, long, slender start of that fall run. And the reel that I'm using is a pen. What is that reel? That's a pen slammer for 4,500 size. And I use the, the Power Pro braid. I'm a big fan of the Power Pro braid, the green one, the, the mossy green. I think this is 30 pound, but it might be 40 pound. I think it might actually be 40 pound that I have on that reel. And the leader is Daiwa. And I think that that is 40 pound as well, but it could be 30 pound. I'm not sure. Either, th either 30 or 40 I tend to use in this situation. Some people go heavier. Some people suggest going heavier, but... I kind of like uh, living all dangerously and getting more action, personally. I'm just very careful around the rocks. I kind of know where all of them are at this spot, so... Yeah, that fish hit pretty close. As the sun dips and you get into that last little window of, of light. Um, fish definitely getting, getting in that feed mode. Yeah, really nice day. I remember this day was, uh, I think in like the 60s. Real nice temperature. And here comes another plane. Here comes that plane. But yeah, pretty good striped bass season for me. Got on them. Got on those bass and, uh, no complaints. And, uh, yeah, a pretty good season. And I saved, uh, I was able to save some, some videos for the winter. It's definitely in the back of my mind the entire, the entire season was that I gotta think about the winter this year. Because last year I didn't and I was trying to create content and I just... Get skunked, skunked day after day after day after day. So I knew, so I filmed a couple extra episodes for this, for this winter just in case. Can at least put something out each month. That was a nice fish. That was a nice fish. A nice little school started rolling in. The slot size bass. Keeper. Keeper slot size bass. But yeah, all I'm doing is, and this is a kind of a technique that you have to adjust literally by the minute um, with fishing at like 
this style because um, the tide changes by the minute and you have to adjust but yeah I'm working kind of the lower part of the water column depends where the bass are staged at they, they could be staged at the top the bottom the mid uh, maybe somewhere in between um, but you know it takes a minute to kind of figure out where they are I realize that they were sitting sort of where those that that boat is moving in the rip right where that in line with the the sun reflection right there that's kind of where the fish are staged at and so what I'm doing is I'm bouncing the bottom trying to get their attention right before I get to that mark um, and they're faced towards us more or less um, towards towards me um, with their head so now my, I'm right in line with the with where I think that they're staged at and yep there we go fish on so I definitely try when I can figure out where the strike zone of where the fish are staged at I'll, I'll make sure I give myself some leeway with where my initial cast is so I can line it up with where I think that the the striper are in the water column and also where they're staged at so I'm always thinking about that before I cast out the cast isn't like a little blind cast that I'm doing each time sometimes you know if I can't figure out where the fish are I'll just start blind casting but um, once you have them dialed in I think it's important when they're the bass are this size if they're lone ranger you know big cow stripers it's different um, but when they're schooled up like this and you can figure out where the strike zone is um, nine times out of ten you're just gonna keep knocking fish after fish because they're usually staged in the same spot they don't move far if, if the f the source of food that they're feeding on is in a particular area they're gonna stick around it um, so that's usually my my, my uh, strategy when it comes to striped bass fishing as far as uh, casting goes yep this is the last cast here that boat is really close to the jetty you can see the camera is very wide but yeah I think that they're trolling I can see they're, they got the line out the top maybe mojo rig or something just letting it sit in the current do tie up with the boats every once in a while at this location so you gotta be careful it does happen and I mean when you're working against a motor your line versus motor you're not gonna win and I definitely have been spooled before so something to be careful with yeah I'm basically doing nothing with this uh, retrieve I'm just sort of letting the current do most of the work And there he is. There she is. On a striped bass. In that same exact spot. Yeah, it was a good good day of fishing. Nice little afternoon. It's nice weather this day. Yeah. Yeah, the winter definitely exhausts me. I get really, really tired in the winter time, and I think the short days kind of bum me out. But it is what it is, you know. We're already halfway through December. Only a couple more months, and hopefully I'll escape and and go some somewhere this year. Um, I think I'm gonna let this. Let this clip play out and hope you enjoyed the Bobcast, the Bob podcast for a bit. And yeah, more videos to come.
car. Right, take care. Later. Well, that was good fishing. Thanks for watching, everybody. Catch you on the next one. Peace.